Hi, my name is Amanda Carrera and I have been attending Substance with my husband Matt for about 13 years now. We have three children, ages 15, 13, and 7. My background is in education and I run my own parenting uh, business called Revival Parenting. I am so honored to be here speaking with you today. The theme for Moms Group this year is abundantly fruitful. And today I'm going to be talking about the abundant yes. Think about it. From the moment our children are born, we tell them what not to do, what to stop doing. When you have a newborn baby, oh love, you're okay? Stop crying. When you have a toddler, you say, oh, can you please stop throwing food on the ground? When you have a preschool and preschooler and you're walking through Target, stop whining, we're not getting a new toy. We're actually here for me to walk through all the aisles, right? And then an elementary student. Can you turn off the screens now? We're all done. No, I'm sorry. No more screens today. And then teens. Stop ignoring me. Stop procrastinating. Clean your room. Don't talk to me that way. Yet, we're called to have life and to have it abundantly. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came so that you would have life and have it abundantly. How can we share an abundant yes with our children while we hold boundaries? The average toddler hears the word no an astonishing 400 times a day. That's not only tiresome for you as a mom, but it's also harmful for our children. According to studies, kids who hear no have poorer language skills than those parents who offer a more positive feedback. Plus, saying no becomes ineffective when we overuse it. It's like the boy who cried wolf. When our children hear no all the time, they actually begin to tune out our voices. Yes is more than a word. Dr. Daniel Siegel, who is an internationally recognized educator, neuropsychiatrist, and best-selling author, P.S. I, rec I recommend all of his books. He says yes is actually a state of being, a state of relate relating. It's a gateway to curiosity, growth, and resilience. He writes this in his book called The Yes Brain. While a no brain can potentially activate fight or flight in our children's bodies, which is created when they feel threatened and shut down. When using yes more often, you're actually empowered as adults to help raise children's yes brain. And when we do this repeatedly over time, it creates more of a positive trait in their life long term. I can already hear you. Wait, 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 Amanda. Are you saying that we can't say no to our kids? Absolutely not. But remember, how many times are they hearing no, don't, and stop from us? Think about it. We are already in control of where our kids live, what they eat, who they see, who they play with, where they go to church, what music they listen to, what TV they listen to, when they have screen time, what they wear, and so much more. What I'm asking you is to be able to help bring abundance to their life. Remember, it actually builds resilience for a child to hear a reframe because then their brain is on the yes brain and they can help problem solve and think with the yes brain rather than being shut down when the no brain occurs. Do you know that it takes six positive traits to overthrow only one negative that we hear in our mind? This means when we hear one negative thing, our mind holds onto it as tightly as when we hear six positive things. This is really powerful. This is sacred as parents. We have the opportunity to pour into our kids' lives rather than zapping the life out of them. Listen to these two statements and notice the feeling in your body. 
No, you can't have a cookie right now. We're having dinner soon. Yes, you can have a cookie as soon as we're finished with dinner. Okay, I tried really hard to use the same tone of voice and to not change my facial expressions there. But even then, I wonder if, like me, when I said yes, there's a little leap in your chest. And when I say no, there's a little sinking. And that's because that's how we're wired. When we hear no, we close down. It's often connected with shame and blame and guilt and anger and frustration. And when we hear yes, it's open, it's abundant. We feel free and safe and trusting, optimistic, maybe even understood. So what else can we do as parents rather than just say no and stop? We can empathize. It sounds like this. Oh, I bet you're disappointed you can't play with your friends this morning. You can understand. I get it. I wish we could stay up late and read more books. It feels good to snuggle together. We can offer a choice. Would you like to do your chore now or in 20 minutes after you have more Lego time? We can reframe it, form it in a positive, with, like my cookie example. Yes, you can have more screen time as soon as your homework is finished. You can do things together, right? Kids need our support. Just like Kendra Ganucci's talk on gradual release of responsibility, when our kids are having a hard time, they need more of that we space. So it sounds like this. I'll help you clean up your room. I can tell it's overwhelming for you too. Let's go together. And here's a pro tip. When we hold boundaries, notice the energy and the voice that you are bringing into the space. Our kids are master observers and they know us better than we think. If we're not sure if our kids are gonna hold the boundary, in fact, if we're pretty sure they're gonna fight us or ignore us, they sense that too. We bring that energy into the situation and they keep pushing. Try a boundary sandwich with a firm and loving voice. Here's an example. I know you don't want to stop and take a bath, and it's time. I'll go upstairs with you now and we'll put some music on that you like in the bathroom. I wonder if you'd notice in my example when I held the boundary, and it's time, I used the word and rather than but. This is the same as using a yes rather than a no. What we want is our energy and our voice to usher in the boundary happening. We often need to hold boundaries for our kids, right? This is actual kindness. We want them to be able to hold the boundary, to respond and to obey. After all, holding boundaries, it's work for us. It's work for you and it's work for your child. We're gonna put work into it. But do you want that work to be connective or disconnective? Disconnected sounds like, do it now, I told you, go take a bath. We have to do the energy. Where do you want to put it? Our last abundant yes idea has to do with the environment. Does your child, regardless of their age, have a yes space in your home? Somewhere they can be themselves without you saying, don't touch that, put that away, that's not safe, stop doing that. Young children need an environment where they are free to play and explore safely without our no. That's where they learn. It can be as small as one of those cute pop-up tents. It doesn't need to be the entire living room. But where can they go to an experience an abundant yes? Older children, often this is their rooms. Can they have a space that doesn't have to follow all the other rules of the house, that it has to be completely tidy and up to our standards? Where can they go to explore who God uniquely made them to be without our opinions, expectations, and projections? Where are they free to process, think, regulate, and rejuvenate because a teen's mind is completely repruning and they need a yes space. Lastly, I'm talking to you mamas. I know parenting is hard. I'm doing it every day and it never ever ends. No matter what age or stage our children are in. I'm wondering about you. 
Are you open to a yes when your child wants to connect? Or are they also hearing no from you all the time? Here's my caveat. We're not made to be our children's playmates. You do not need to be available to them 24-7 in entertaining them, especially if they have their own yes space. But we are created to connect with them. Our role is to protect, attune, regulate, and create safety with them. Is your life open to a sacred interruption? Do you have margin to give a yes to your child? Every yes you say is a no to something else and vice versa. We get to choose where our time and energy goes. What shifts can you make to help create a life abundant that's just as Jesus promised? Let's not let the enemy kill, destroy, and steal what God has given to us as a gift of delight in our own homes. Let's get curious where we can have an abundant yes in our hearts for our children too. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you that you have promised us life and you have promised it abundantly. I pray that you would speak to each mama heart that's listening to this, that it would be full of your grace and compassion and that you would highlight just one idea, one small takeaway that's unique to this specific family and that you would bring an abundant yes, an abundance of connection, an abundance of peace. We pray this in your holy name. Amen.